Next we look at the kill command. The kill command is used to delete variables, either in memory or on disk. First form, the simplest form, is kill followed by a comma list of variables. These variables will be deleted. Their values will be lost. These variables can be either local scalar variables, they can be uh, arrays, they can be global arrays. The second form here is kill all except. In this form here, we have parentheses around the comma list, and all variables in local memory except i, j, and k will be deleted. The second form of the kill can only be used with variables in memory. It cannot be used with variables on disk. Here we see the usage with an array. We assume we have an internal array called A, and it has a node called 1, 2. This will kill this node, or delete this node, and any nodes that are descendant of it. Any of its children nodes are also deleted, if there are any. Another form is when we go to the global arrays, if I just say kill, up arrow A, it will delete the entire global array A. Alternatively, if I specify a particular node in the global array, it will kill that node and all descendants. There's another form of kill which isn't shown here, which is the kill with no arguments, kill followed by two blanks, in which case it deletes the entire local symbol table. The lock command is used to gain exclusive access to a global array node and any of its descendants. This will vary a good deal by implementation, and most of it's been superseded by transaction processing. But the form is lock and then you give a global array node. That node and any of its descendants are then locked for exclusive use, if it's available. If it's not available, the lock will return and dollar sign $test will be set to zero. If, the, if it succeeds, the lock will return and dollar sign $test will be uh, true. The lock command can also have a timeout on it. It's not shown here, but it's the amount of time to wait for a lock to take effect. So, for example, if you want to lock a particular node, some other program has access to that node, you could specify you would will willing to wait one, two, three, four seconds, whatever, until the node becomes available. Like I say, it is been superseded in most versions of MUMPS by transaction processing more, more similar to regular database processing. The merge command is used to copy a global array or a local array uh, as a, dependence, a dependent of another array. So in this case here, we have a node a, uh, in global array A. The node is 1, 2. And we have some global array B, which may have quite a bit of depth. It copies all of the array B as descendants of the node 1, 2 in global array A. It's a copy operation. The new command is used to create a new version of a variable temporarily. So, for example, if we have a, a, a block here, if A is equal to B, now A and B exist in the outside program, entering the block, I can create new instances of A and B which are separate from the instances in the outer program. I can modify with them, play around with them, and so forth. And then when I exit the block, the variables that I created with the new command are lost. They're dropped. It's push down stack, and the most and they're dropped. And the old variables come back to life. It's not used all that much, but it, it is handy in a situation where you want you have a new copy of a variable within a block or several blocks. The open command we've um, we've mentioned several times before. Uh, this is going to vary a good deal depending upon the implementation you're using. Mine uses a very standard original implementation where I use a unit number. The default unit number is five. That's your console. That's your keyboard and your screen. And then you open other unit numbers. I allow units one through ten. And there's um, unit six is special. It's used for some other purposes. Uh, we won't get into those. You'll have to look at my um, user guide to see how it works. Uh, when In my version here, when you open a file, you specify that the file is old, new, or append. And these, obviously, for people old enough to remember, came from the usage in the uh, IBM JCL. When you opened a file, you specified old, new, or append. Uh, what old means is the file exists, and you're opening it for reading. What new means is the file doesn't exist, and you're opening it for writing. It implies write. Uh, it, if there is an existing copy of the file, and you open it with new, it'll destroy the existing copy. It'll overwrite it. Append means that you're opening it to add things at the end of the file. Uh, the open, as they say, arguments vary a great deal depending upon implementation. You should look them up. This is the way it looks in mine. 
In the case here, we have open, and we specify unit number one. That's the one we're opening. And the file we're opening is aaa.dat, whatever the name happens to be. And we're specifying that the file already exists. Now, the open command will set dollar sign $test. If the open succeeded, dollar sign $test will be true. If the open failed, the dollar sign $test will be false. So if not dollar sign $test, we will write out the error message in halt. Okay. Um, then we open unit number two. Um, this is bbb.dat, and we're specifying new. We're creating a file. If bbb.dat exists, it'll be overwritten. Now we're creating a new one. And again, we check dollar sign $test to determine whether or not um, the open succeeded. Now this is just a copy operation. Uh, we are copying from unit one to unit two. So what we do here is we got four, two blanks, which means forever. It's unlimited, just it's an infinite loop. Do. Uh, the do enters the block here. We switch to unit number one. That now, be, by default, when we start a program, unit five is our default. But here we're switching to unit number one, and we're reading a record. We then check in the next line to see if dollar sign tr test is true. If it's not true, we break. That's my special usage of break. That would not be standard. But it would take you out of the loop instead of going back up and using semaphores and so forth. It's a quicker way out of the loop. So if the read succeeded, we will then hit the, this line, which switches the unit to unit number two. Now unit number two is the default. And I write the record to unit number two, followed by a new line character. That writes it out. And I will loop here. I will loop until I attempt to read a record and there aren't any more. It fails. And when I read that, that will cause the break. That'll cause the exit from the loop. Uh, it means we finished copying. The next line is a close. Closes are very simple. You just give one or more unit numbers. Those units are then closed. They're released. Their buffers are, are flushed and uh, they're available for reuse. It's usually very important to switch back to your standard console because if you attempt to write done, um, remember the last thing that happened is use one was probably was, was definitely the last thing um, use command executed because it was a fail on a read from unit number one, which took you out. Now you've closed unit number one and unit number two. If you attempt to write without this inter without use five, you'll be attempting to write to a unit number which is no longer open and was used for input anyway. So we switch. It's very important to switch back to the console. Console unit number five can be read or read or written to. It's it's the keyboard and it's your screen. Um, in mine here, we have, won't go into detail. You can set it up so the open command has variables. The input file here is AAA, and the output file is BBB, and we use those uh, in the open. So it's just um, it's just a sm small variation on that. But again, this is going to vary by implementation. Uh, that's how mine works. There's more detail in the uh, user guide for mine. Uh, I/O format codes. We've seen some of these. Uh, they're fairly simple, very trivial. The exclamation point uh, means new line. Put two of them together, you get two new lines. Put three of them together, three new lines. It skips lines. Um, pound sign is for new page. I don't think that's really used too much anymore, but it does create a form feed into your output. Question mark X, where X is a, is a value, uh, is a tab. It will move you to that column. So if I want to move to column 10, I would say question mark 10, and that would advance to column 10. If I'm in column 12, that's the last column I wrote, and I say move to, you know, move to column 10, it will generate a new line and move to column 10 on the next, next line. We'll see some of that in the, in the coming videos.